Hello, welcome to this edition of Eye on Africa here on France 24. I'm Haxi Myers Belkin. The headlines. Abductions of opposition figures in Zimbabwe raise fears of a new state crackdown on dissent. The government of President Emerson Mnangagwa saying rogue elements linked to the previous government could be to blame. Hundreds gather in the Congolese city of Goma in solidarity with Ebola response teams who've been facing increasing hostility as they work to eradicate the virus. This as Ebola continues to spread in the east of the country. And we meet English-speaking Cameroonians displaced by the ongoing Anglophone insurgency in the east of the country as they try to rebuild their lives in French-speaking areas. We begin in Zimbabwe, where concern is growing at a spate of abductions and beatings of opposition supporters. This following two banned opposition street protests in both Harare and Bulawayo. Satirist Samantha Correa has been found alive after a late-night abduction by men in masks on Wednesday, while the country's opposition Movement for Democratic Change says a number of its officials and their family members have also been kidnapped and beaten in recent days. A little earlier, I spoke to our correspondent in Harare, Ryan Truscott, who started telling me about Samantha Correa's ordeal. Well, she says she was abducted from her Harare home by three armed men at gunpoint last night, stripped naked, uh, beaten and made to drink and lie in sewage-filled water. And then later she was dumped in a suburb on the outskirts of the city and had to beg for some clothes from residents there. Uh, rights groups say that her abduction may be linked to a recent skit uh, she acted in, uh, which she and other actors uh, satirized uh, police brutality. Her station, Bus Stop TV, actually specializes in poking fun at the authorities. But obviously, in this case, uh, someone didn't see the funny side. Uh, the, the Media Institute of Southern Africa has called on the authorities to get to the bottom of Correa's abduction. It says if the, if the police don't do that, it'll encourage more lawlessness against all those who are exercising their right to freedom of expression. And surely this abduction, other cases of abduction, uh, are likely to prove rather damaging to President Emerson Mnangagwa uh, as he seeks to re-engage with Western democracies. Yes, it will. I mean, just today we had the British ambassador to Harare, Melanie Robinson, expressing her concern over Correa's abduction. She said in a tweet that she'd be raising the issue with the government. But the government's likely to deny any involvement in these abductions, which have been going on for a few days now. They escalated ahead of a, a planned protest march in Harare last Friday. Uh, since then, the MDC says several more, more of its officials and their family members have been targeted in the western city of Bulawayo, uh, either intimidated or abducted and beaten. The Bulawayo, you may recall, is where the MDC had planned to hold a protest march on Monday, but that was banned by the, by the police. The, the government recently said that these abductions could be the work of rogue elements, possibly with links to the former government of Robert Mugabe. I think critics will find that hard to believe, though. Uh, and Western embassies here have also criticized the government over its crackdown on dissent, which is uh, linked to, to the opposition's plans to hold protests across the country. The, the government says it can't allow these protests to go ahead because of the economic hardships. It says that violence could break out if people get onto the streets. The president of the Somalian region of Jubaland, Ahmed Mohamed Madobe, has been re-elected following a campaign that stoked tensions between Kenya, an ally of Madobe, and Ethiopia. Both countries have large numbers of peacekeepers in Somalia. They see Jubaland as a key buffer zone against Islamist attacks in their own countries. Mogadishu, meanwhile, has said it will not recognize the result. Central government insisting the candidate selection process was not carried out fairly. Hundreds of people have taken part in a mass show of support for Ebola response teams in the eastern Congolese city of Goma. The health workers have increasingly been the targets of attacks in recent months, with local communities often reluctant to engage with anti-Ebola measures. The governor of North Kivu province announcing that anyone willfully spreading misinformation about Ebola would be arrested. The disease has killed some 1,800 people in the region since the start of the latest outbreak. 
Meanwhile, unhindered access to clean water is crucial to preventing the spread of the Ebola virus. For many living in the Ebola-struck city of Goma, Lake Kivu is nothing short of a lifeline. Junio Kana reports. The golden rule to avoid the spread of Ebola is to wash your hands regularly. But for that, you need water. In Goma, in the Democratic Republic of Congo, water is essential in the fight against the virus spreading across the region. Facing shortages, Ebola response teams have had to rely on the generosity of Lake Kivu to supply health checkpoints. The lake is crucial because it helps vulnerable people, poor people, and it helps in the fight against Ebola. When water is abundant, we can help prevent the spread of the disease. Finding water in Goma is difficult. The city's water distribution network is outdated and only supplies a few neighborhoods. For many of Goma's inhabitants, access to water means pumping it directly from the lake. The water problem in Goma clearly shows that only this part of the city is supplied, not the whole city. That's why a lot of people come to the lake to get their water. They also then carry some home for those who need it. On a daily basis, entrepreneurial water suppliers organize several trips. The lake water is treated with chlorine and then distributed to reservoirs in the region. Water towers like these require 5,000 litres of water per day. If the lake wasn't there, it would be catastrophic. Maybe the response teams would get water from elsewhere, maybe in Rwanda, in Sake, but it would be catastrophic. We would not even survive. We wouldn't survive because the lake is our only source of drinking water. Lake Kivu is an essential force in stopping the spread of Ebola and an invaluable resource for the local population. For the people that live on its shores, the waters of Kivu give, shape and preserve life. Almost two years of a bloody insurgency in the English-speaking eastern regions of Cameroon have left hundreds dead. Many more find themselves internally displaced after fleeing to French-speaking areas. The city of Bafang in the west of the country has absorbed large numbers of people in recent months. Our correspondent Indira Ayuk spoke to them about the hardships they're facing and the hopes they have for the future. This modest apartment in a neighborhood in Bafang in the French-speaking West region of Cameroon is home to about 20 people. Ten-year-old Charisma has been out of school for two years. Money is tight, so she has to join her mother in petty trading. I was afraid because they do not allow people to go out from 7 p.m. You cannot see anybody outside. Bafang is a very difficult town. So we try all the way, I walk. Even if my mother even wants to prepare something, she will even go to the market and borrow things. This family story is becoming familiar. Many of the displaced people in Bafang can support themselves. To assist the new arrivals, a workshop is on the way at the school. Participants will learn how to make items like powder soap and yogurt, which they can go on to sell. We all know the challenges of these displaced people. They need to eat, they need blankets, they need to be taken care of and they need recognition. It's not easy for them. We want to make them independent. Marie Georgette is a participant from the Southwest region. She plans to train other internally displaced people while making money selling her wares. Presently, there are no school going on um, for like two years now. So I've stayed in the house for long. My father said I should come here to, so that I can have good education. About 500,000 internally displaced people are scattered in parts of Cameroon and Nigeria with no safety net. A humanitarian situation which the UN has described as one of the world's most neglected. Living alongside the new arrivals has not been easy for Bafang's inhabitants. At first there was a little resentment towards the displaced people. With time the tension between both communities disappeared. And today the displaced people live in harmony in the Okam. French-speaking border towns may welcome more displaced people in the days ahead. 
Separatist fighters have announced a 10-day lockdown in the Anglophone regions following the life sentence handed down to Anglophone separatist leader Sisi Kouayouk Tabe for terrorism and secession. Ghanaian football star Junior Agogo has died at the age of 40, four years after suffering a stroke. Agogo played a total of 27 times for his native Ghana, but first made a name for himself in British football, launching his career at Sheffield Wednesday, before going on to play for Queen's Park Rangers, Brentford and the Bristol Rovers. Before his retirement in 2012, he also played for teams in Cyprus, Scotland and Egypt. Another sad loss for Africa's footballing community this Thursday with the news that one of Nigeria's most successful female players has also passed away. Forward Ifeyani Chijini has died at the age of 36 following a long period of illness. She played for Nigeria at the Olympic Games in 2000 and also in 2008 she helped her country secure no fewer than four Women's Africa Cup of Nations titles too. Well, that's all we have time for right now. Thank you very much for watching. There's more news coming up in just a few minutes' time here on France 24. Do stay tuned.